Morning everyone, welcome back to the Macbeth Channel TV. The sun is shining, the England top is on, big game tonight. Denmark in the next group stage game. Now I was meant to be doing NX Newcastle for the fan zone, Euro 2024 fan zone. We're still doing it, this time it's just at a different venue for the next two games. The group stage games are going to be at Tap Yard Studios in Hulls Yard. The ticket link is in the description, only one pound for great crack, great vibes, massive screen, drink offers, live band, all that sort of stuff. And then we'll be back in the next, possibly for the knockout stages. So wait and see for that one. Stay tuned. If we get there, surely we will. Because if we wouldn't Denmark tonight, then we'll be pretty much guaranteed to get through. We surely we'll get through. Southgate looks to be picking an unselected team, an unchanged team, shall I say. And uh, you never know, that should be enough to get us through any reason. We'll see where we go from there. That's England covered, because I tell you what, I've got transfer news and loads of it, which is, I'm sure what is the most interesting. Let's go for a nice walk all the way down here on this beautiful summer's day. Finally, some decent weather in the tune the last couple of days. Someone might actually be here, people. Happy days. Is it coming home? Who knows? Who's coming to Newcastle, though? That's the most important thing. Also, shout out Meat Stack. I'll be there again. I tell you what, if anyone wants any match day scram the place to be is meat stack in newcastle on the big market their euro 2024 menu is unreal i had the kebab burger the other day the german special menu is out now i'll be heading there again before i go to tap yard studios for the fan zone tonight so check them out unreal scram unreal and they're doing giveaways as well so every time you buy some food you get a scratch card ticket off you can win some money or you can win free burgers <laughs> what more do you want Right then, transfer news. Big news yesterday. I did the St. James Park developments video, so I didn't touch on this. So if you haven't seen that, check it out already. Uh, a lot of effort went in that video, and there's lots of good updates on there. So have a look, sees. Transfer news, though, and there is a plenty. And yesterday, I want to talk about this. It was Elysian news last night from Fabrizio Romano, but I want to talk about the Italian stallion. This is who I want to focus on. I'm not talking about Sandro. I'm talking about Califori. The next Maldini is what people are calling him. People are calling Ricardo Califori the next Maldini. Is it because he's a defender and got long hair and a headband? Yes, it is. Doing up Nesta. Alessandro Nesta vibes. Just any great Italian defender with long hair, basically. I had never heard of this bloke until the first game of the Euros that they played the other day. And that, in fact, was his competitive debut. So, what a way to impress. And I don't know he didn't get man the match with Kays, I did, who I want as well at right wing, if we can't get Elise. But Califori... Is very highly rated. I'd be lying if I had really heard of him until this point. I mean, I wanted Bongiorno, the other da the Italian defender, for obvious reasons. But Califori looks a player. Look, got the headband, so you know he's good. You can't go around with Italian hair like that and not be a star, can you? In all seriousness, it is Newcastle who have approached them for the sign of Califori, according to the Athletic. So the Athletic has a very reliable source, very good source. The Athletic, it's not like the some of your tabloids and stuff that you get or some journalist or even worse in the no accounts you know what I mean so those are very good at, uh, at picking out transfers at getting scoops so I would say we can rely upon them let's take a little detour down here why not getting a bit busy up there dog walk I just want to interrupt the walk so Califori Newcastle have apparently made contact with Bolinia over the signing of the Italian defender loads of midges <laughs> this is why he's filming doors I'll tell you what I just wanted to take a nice walk it's too nice to be stuck indoors, isn't it? Sun is shining. So, if we've made contact with the linea for Califori, according to the Athletic, but then again, you've got other competitors. Fritio Romano did a video the night before with someone else saying that Juventus were closing on them. However, now there's been a bit of a stall in that deal. Maybe that's alerted other clubs, or is his agent putting it out there? Is this all a smoke screen? That's what I've heard people saying as well. This could just be a smoke screen for someone else to come in because they're looking at it with Califori and he's a left-sided centre-back not what we really need we need a right-sided centre-back to replace the agent Fabian Shaw he scored a bloody own goal last night <laughs> uh, I'm just joking we love Fabian don't we but um, Califori being that left-sided we've already got Byrne now we've got Kelly Botman's coming back are we going to have four left-sided centre-backs and Fabian Shaw is the right-sided one dear me probably that would be our crack I don't know how much well I see the Athletic's pretty spot on, but they're seeing that Juventus are in talks, seeing that Liverpool could be looking at signing them as well. Apparently it's going to be about 40 million easy to sign Califori, so that's a lot of money. A lot of money for us when we've got Lloyd Kelly in, obviously the tossing deal fell through, so this is evidence that 
Newcastle are still going to try and sign two defenders this window. So California, listen, it'll be a quality signing. I'd want someone a bit more balanced, someone on that right-hand side, but California does look the real deal in the one game I've seen of him in the Euros. But obviously everyone's raving about him. These big clubs are targeting him and they wouldn't be if he wasn't a, a star in the making. So the young Italian defender, link with Newcastle. Let's see if that one develops. Uh, On to some other news then. What is developing? Developing? Development, in a sense, is Michael Elise. His future. Because Crystal Palace, oh, I do need, do need, do need go on there, yeah? All right. Uh, nice day for it. Elise, development, because Crystal Palace have offered him a new and improved deal with a new release clause for next summer. So Palace are trying to keep a hold of their star, fair play. I'll tell you what, if they keep a hold of him, and they keep a hold of the legs of Eze in that as well, they've got Adam Morton there now. They're going to have some team next season, Palace. But obviously, it's all down to Eze now, uh, Elise, sorry, it's all down to Michael Elise because it's in his hands. Basically, Chelsea are still confident of going back in with an offer. Uh, Newcastle are still trying to sign him as well. So, there's options there as well as Bundesliga giants by Munich across this road. So, Elise has a lot of options on the table. Newcastle are trying to sign the right winger. They have been in talks with them. They did get permission from Palace to speak to him. So, what have we been saying? How much have we been offering? How is Elise feeling? Is he holding out for a huge club in the Champions League? Is he holding out for more money? Is he, well, he'd be going to Chelsea, that's the case then. Because that's where everyone counts for the money, innit? He will be going to Chelsea. So, Elise, for me, it's, it was always going to be a hard deal. Listen, listen, I said it would be my dream is to my sign, the Premier League proven right winger who can score goals, assist, has all the flair, technical ability and skill to go with it. I would absolutely love him. But uh, whether we can make it happen, it's a different story. When you've got the likes of Chelsea, Bayern Munich involved, bigger money, bigger spending, it's going to be difficult. Oh, little turnaround, Z's. So, who else could be leaving Newcastle this summer then? Well, we touched on this on the podcast the other night, and that is wonder kid Yankuba Minta has an early trip over. Reports the other day were saying that Dortmund want him. Then you imagine Yuri Sahin is a big fan. There was people saying that it could be 40 million last week, or Newcastle are going to have to cash in. Even Sky Sports reporting it, they might have to reluctantly sell the right wing star. It's not going to be 40 million, like, because if you're going to get 40 million, then unfortunately, I would reluctantly understand as well as a financial fair player that you would have to sell him. 40 million for a player that hasn't even played a minute for Newcastle and has only played in the Eredivisie and international for Gambia. It's called the Gambian Messi, isn't he? But uh, you take 40 million, you'd have to. I think it's not going to be that price, basically. The Athletic are also reporting it's, it's around the 20 million mark, not the 40 million mark. So I would never see we're getting 40 million from us with 20 million. I wouldn't fancy it. I'd want to keep him because you're not for a fact. You just know he's going to go on to be an absolute world beater. And he will be the bloody next Messi if we sell him. So for 20 million, I'd rather keep him. But listen, there's big decisions being made at the club because of financial fair play and PSR. So it's a nightmare situation really this summer. Uh, it's not ideal having to sell these young stores. And Kay made a good point on the podcast that if you were going to sell Minta, I'd want a buyback option. Because if he does go on to be an absolute star, I want to bring him back to the team. I want to get him here. Bring him home. Or you'd want a huge sell-on uh, close. If you like what Man City have got with James Trafford, because at the minute Newcastle are struggling to get the James Trafford deal over the line. We've offered around 16 to 18 million. They only want 20 million. But the issue is, is that there's a 20% sell-on close for Manchester City, where Burnley got him from last season. So that's stalling the deal a little bit there on the goalkeeper situation. One positive news to finish on then is the future of Isaac. Alexander Isaac is still in contract talks, progressing well, and is expected to sign a new deal to make him the tune's highest earner. Fantastic news. Got to keep a hold of Isaac and Bruno this summer before we even talk about who else we could sign. I tell you what, I'm going to get back my walk now, people, and enjoy the sunshine. Get mentally prepared for the England game at night for Southgate. Ah, looking forward to it though. Tap Yard Studios hosting that event should be a good in. Take it in the description if you fancy it. 
If not, enjoy yourselves, whatever you're up to. Let us know in the comments what you think of all the transfer rumours. Subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.